Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In our previous tutorial, we learned what a JSP is and how the Tomcat container converts JSP into a servlet, compiles it and then deploys it so that uh, every JSP is actually corresponding to a servlet and behind the scenes. Now in this tutorial, we're going to explore the, a few concepts of JSPs a little bit more in detail. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is, uh, if I open up the code that we wrote in our earlier tutorial, this is a uh, very simple Java code. We are just using primitives and then carrying out simple operations. Uh, things get a little bit tricky when we do a little bit more advanced coding. So uh, let's try that out. I'll, uh, I'll create a simple JSP page and the intention is to display the time in the JSP. Whenever the user accesses the JSP, it displays the current time in the system. So uh, let me go ahead and create a new JSP file. I'll call this clock.jsp. Okay, change uh, the title to clock. In the body, timing us. And uh, it's very simple. All I, all I have to do is create a new data object and then um, print the value here. So I will use the JSP tag equals new date. Simple enough, it actually shows an error. What's the error? It says date cannot be resolved to a type. So I will obviously have to import the date class from the Java util package. Now where do I do that? I cannot import it over here. I cannot have a script block over here and then do a import. Why can I not do that? Because we learned in a previous tutorial that whatever code we write inside the script block goes inside a method in the converted uh, servlet and that method is what gets executed on every call, every uh, URL request. So I obviously cannot put the import statement in here because that will also go into a method and we'll get a compiler error. Now where do I put this import? The place where we put the import is this first line that you see over here. There is this JSP tag similar to what we've seen here, but then it is followed by an add symbol. And then there is this page word over here. And uh, there are a few attributes. We have language equals Java, content type equals text HTML, character set, page encoding. So uh, we will look at these attributes a bit later, but uh, let me tell you that the import that we are trying to do here is one of the attributes that we need to enter over here, just like language and content type. Import is another attribute in this tag. So all I do is I do an import equals and I enter the package name you know, and the class which I'm trying to import here. So I'll import java.util.date, uh, save. Now, Eclipse does not show an error and uh, this does not give a compilation error also. Let me just quickly run this. There you go, the time is printed. Now, what are these other attributes over here and what is this, you know, a JSP tag at and page doing? So this is actually something called as a page directive. Every JSP page can use a page directive, and you, I mean, you can use this page directive in every JSP page and specify some properties and values that are applicable throughout the page. Here, there are a few properties that we have set. Language equals Java means that all the script tags that we're gonna have inside this page will contain Java code. Well, that's obvious because we are developing Java code and it's a JSP after all. So it is actually optional. I think Java is the default. You don't have to enter it. It's just here because we use the Eclipse wizard and then that's put this up here. Look at the next one. Content type equals text HTML. This is saying that the output of this, uh, this JSP page is in uh, text HTML format. This is similar to what we added in our uh, servlet. Let me open the servlet here. In our server tutorial, I added this line of code here. You know, we didn't ex go into the detail about what this code is, but let's do that now. I added a response that set content type is text slash HTML. 
So what is this doing? This is actually doing the same thing as what our uh, page directory uh, content type is doing. What it says is that the output of this uh, request, whenever this request goes and the output is coming, so this whole output is in text HTML format. So if there is a tag, if I enter a tag here, the is of course bold for uh, the text within the stack. So the text in, inside the stack gets rendered in bold. So this B it will be converted as a HTML tag. So the browser which is accepting this request knows that hey the content type is HTML. So I should not print this B as it is. I need to convert the text in between these tags to bold. So that's what the content type says. There are different content types. We're going to go into uh, more detail about content types in the later tutorials. But at a high level, this is what the content type does. So uh, page encoding is again something that we're going to go in detail in the later tutorials. Import is something that we just saw. We can import Java classes and uh, namespaces using this import type. Oops. Using the import type. And uh, this, as I told you, a page director will be there inside a JSP. The head, heading of the JSP page will be there at the top, and this will be applicable to the entire JSP page. So anything that needs to be set globally for the whole page will be set here. So now what Tomcat does is it sees that, okay, I have an import tag here, so what it does is it puts this import java.util.date at the very beginning of our converted subject class. So all these are clues for Tomcat to convert these, uh, you know, these directives into code. So if you look at the servlet code over here, it would have an import at the top. I'm not going to go into that. You can probably text this out yourself. There are quite a few um, page directives we can use. We are we see only four here, but there are a, a few others. Um, you can, you might land up in a situation where you have to use a lot of page directives, and then this line could go on forever. So in that case, there is uh, there's another thing you can do. You can actually remove this from this line and have a new page directive. So that would be as simple as opening the directive tag here, page, and then your import. So this is same as what we did before. So all you're doing is you're having a new line, and then you're adding this. So again, if you have a lot of imports or you have a lot of uh, page directive tags here, then you can, uh, I'm sorry, page directive properties here, then you can split it up into different tags so that it's easier to maintain the code. Uh, and uh, before we wrap up this tutorial, let me make another note. Page directive is just one of the directives that uh, are supported inside JSP. So this at uh, after the JSP tag is actually a directive tag. So this means that whatever you know, uh, value you're setting here is for the whole page and it should not be inside a script block. So there's one other thing, uh, one other feature which is handy. Um, there's something called as an include character. So in order to demonstrate that, let me write another JSP page here. I will create a new JSP file. I'll call this hello. JSP. Okay, I don't need the title here. Body will be. Does it say hello user? Let me remove all these things. I don't need anything here apart from the text. And I will say save. This is actually a valid JSP. You don't have to have any of those directives. And uh, all, all it does is Tomcat just sees, uh, okay, there's just a little bit of text here, so let me just put this inside the print uh, statement. So it just puts a hello user inside a print statement. It's as simple as that. Now, uh, what does an include uh, directive do? An include directive includes a response from another page into the page where you're putting this include directive. So let's say I want, uh, I have a very good uh, utility JSP here which says uh, some hello text, of course it's a very simple case here, but let's say I have a complex code behind the scenes and then it's printing out a message. 
And I want to include that message here, but I don't want to include all the complex code inside the JSP. So all I can, all I need to do is, I just do a at include file equals. Now here I have to give the the relative path. So this is in the same uh, directory as the hello.jsp is in the same directory as club.jsp. So I just have to say slash hello.jsp. Now what happens? The JSP will get compiled and Tomcat what it does is it takes this uh, directive and says hey this guy wants the contents of hello.jsp to be embedded inside this JSP page. So what it does is it executes the hello.jsp sublet, gets the response, and it does not directly pass the response to the user. What it does is it generates the response of clock.jsp as well, and wherever we have this tag, it embeds the response of hello.jsp into the response of clock.jsp. So we will save and run this. I just have to refresh. There you go. Hello user is generated by a different JSP, hello.jsp, and the rest of the response is by clock.jsp. So we've seen two of the uh, commonly used directive tags. There are a few others which I'll probably cover in the subsequent tutorials, but uh, this should give you uh, an overview of what a directive tag is and uh, a couple of usage scenarios of how you can use that inside your uh, JSP files.